as you just saw in the video and towards the end, we have a myriad of ways to uh, speed up chemical reactions. You can uh, shrink the container. That would be akin to uh, showing you the hallways, right? More kids bumping into each other because there's just there's less space for them to move. One of the reasons why, you know, when our room gets really crowded, stuff gets kind of chaotic in here. Same same idea. Uh, or you dump more stuff in it. You can increase the number of particles. Some of you, when we were doing the exo and endothermic reaction, you weren't getting a very uh, large delta H, right? You couldn't really feel the hot one get very hot or the cold one get very cold uh, unless you dump a lot of particles in. That would be like adding more students to the school. You can also add heat and you turn up the heat. That is going to make the molecules move faster. That would be like uh, having less time. So everyone is running to class because, of course, no one would want to be tardy. We're not about that life. You can also uh, break up any clumps. Uh, some of you guys probably noticed that some of the salts we're using in the endo and exothermic reaction were a little clumpy. So if you broke those up first before you put them in with the water, that's like breaking up the, the little clicks, the packs. Or we can use a catalyst, which is what we're gonna talk about now. Uh, that was akin to hiring a matchmaker, someone that's going to help facilitate or catalyze a reaction, they're gonna help make that match. We're gonna talk about a chemical called an enzyme, which is a biological catalyst, and we're gonna do that by filling in the rest of the notes now. So here we are with blanks that go in the notes, yay. Uh, some reactions may be catalyzed. Make sure you have the proper spelling on catalyzed. This catalyzing is going to lower the activation energy for the reaction. It's going to take that graph you just made and shrink it down. It's going to shrink it down. It's going to allow reactions to happen faster. And because we're lowering the energy we have to put in, it's going to cost less energy overall. This is uh, making the reaction overall much more efficient. It happens more quickly and it takes less resources. It takes less stuff, less energy to put in. If you think of this in like manufacturing sense, what if we could make our products faster and use less energy, spend less money while we're making them. That is the goal here with the enzyme catalyst. That's going to require, like it says here, a catalyst. Usually in uh, biology and in biochemistry, which is where we're going next anyway, we're going to use a protein called an enzyme. It could also be made of RNA, which you may have heard of. It's sort of like DNA, but a little different. Don't worry. We'll learn about it some this year too. But we need some kind of molecule called a protein. It's going to be a special one called an enzyme that will act like a catalyst. The best part of having an enzyme to catalyze the reaction is when the reaction is over, it's not because we ran out of enzyme. It's because we ran out of reactants to turn into products. How this whole process works is the enzyme sticks around, the catalyst remains, it doesn't participate in the reaction, just facilitates the reaction. So the catalyst is gonna be there, the enzyme's gonna be there to do that same reaction over and over and over. This is exactly like the matchmaker, right? If the matchmaker matches two students to up together, the matchmaker doesn't disappear in a poof of smoke, no, the matchmaker is there to help more different students get together. You can see here now on the back of the notes, you have two energy curves, one of them with an enzyme, one of them without the enzyme. And you'll notice that in the red here, we have the original reaction, sort of similar to the one you did, except exothermic instead of endothermic. But we got the reactants, we have to go up a pretty high level. And so your activation energy without an enzyme is a lot larger, right? We have to go from this level all the way up to this level, there's our activation energy without the enzyme. But with the enzyme, the reaction starts sooner. Notice right here, this is where our reaction is starting. If we've got time here, as opposed to time here, the reaction is actually starting more quickly. So not only do we not have to put in as much energy for it to start, the reaction starts faster and it ends faster. This reaction is now ending by the time the other reaction is just getting started. So our reactions happen with less energy, they happen more quickly because they start more quickly when you have an enzyme. Make sure that you note that our, our activation energy without the enzyme is much larger. You can see that over here, right, we're going from these reactants just to the top of that curve. There is our activation energy with an enzyme, much smaller than our activation energy without the enzyme. 
some enzymes work so well that it can lower the activation energy all the way down to the bottom. So as soon as the reactants and the enzyme all commingle, your reaction just starts right there with the amount of thermal energy present in the room. Hopefully this helps you uh, understand a little bit what we're going for with chemical reaction, with energy curves, and with enzymes. Now, go ahead and answer the conclusion questions here at the end of the last lab. You'll notice you've got an energy curve on there. You're going to be drawing hypothetically how this, how this reaction could look with an enzyme. It's not going to give you a specific activation energy with the enzyme, but just make sure it's lower than the one that's already existing. If you're not sure, maybe sketch a rough line and uh, show real life Patterson. Thanks for watching. Let's finish those conclusion questions.